Hey, friend. So listen, my apologies for the Bell Collective video last um, week, last Friday, Saturday, whenever it was I did it. I don't know what it is with uh, Fios and Bell Collective, but it seems like whenever I'm ready to do this one in particular, it want to act stupid. It want to be slow. You understand? And then I start skipping and stuttering all over the place. And, you know, StreamYard really helps out a lot because it, I, it cuts down really on all edits. And will you really stop and think about it? But um, if it keep going the way it's going, child, I may have to go back to editing. And Lord knows I don't want to. But <clears throat> whatever. Bell Collective, Season 2, Episode 3, Love, Marriage, But No Baby in the Baby Character, something like that, it says. This episode was fair. All right. This episode was real fair. All right. It, 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 uh, all right. It, uh, all right. It just was, uh, you know, um, some, I don't care if y'all see the whatever, cause oh well. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was, uh, but, uh, whatever. We'll talk about it. So the episode continues at the tired ass brunch that uh Letitia was hosting, child. So Latrice tries to talk to Morocco Mo. The Morocco Mo allowed her to get one sentence out. And then after that one sentence, when she didn't hear what she wanted to hear, she just decided to storm off and walk off and make the whole situation be about her or whatever the case may be. Then had the nerve to tell Letitia that she was backpedaling and um, pussy popping in a handstand. And I don't know where, Latri where Letitia was backpedaling and pussy popping in a handstand at. I, I don't know when. I didn't see where. I, I, I feel the same way about Letitia then that I feel now. She should have mattered her own damn business. And stop being so quick to put yourself in the middle of somebody else's beef and somebody else's drama. Like I said, Letitia, you can have whatever type of relationship you want with both of those two women separate. All of y'all don't have to be friends. And I hate that a lot of, a lot of women feel that way. A group of women feel like, and all of y'all got to get along and y'all just don't because you won't because it's just not going to happen. We already know how women are very catty, which is what y'all are. Very petty, which is what y'all are. Very messy, which is what y'all are. No shade, but whatever. So Ikea leaves early and it is what it is. I'm going to get this. So speaking of which, Ikea calls Melanie, I believe it was. Um, feeling upset and like her time was wasted and Megaphone agreed. Megaphone, listen, if you going to be Letitia friend, be Letitia friend. All right. Don't be her friend to her face. And then when you get, get up amongst your, your bougie clique, then you want to sit over here and, and try to be like, well, yeah, girl, I understand what you're saying and such, such, such. A, now, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Latrice's shit was tired, delayed, and through. It was Latrice, no shade, but it was delayed. It was delayed. We're so sick and tired of seeing brunches, and it's just y'all bitches. Like, if this is something real and something real life, in real life, Latricia, uh, Letitia, I mean, you will see more, more, you know, people of the city and, and, and stuff like that there at this type of brunch versus it just being your homegirls. Like, for all of that, you could have had that down in your house. <laughs> or to your mama house. You know what I mean? Like, as much as I don't see it for Ikea, I'm not going to sit over here and act like all of her feelings and all of her reservations and all of how she felt about your brunch and you doing it. Um, I'm not going to act like, you know, she's all the way crazy for feeling the way she feels. No shade. But I, I, I just, I can't give you all that, Letitia. I, I would like to, because I don't like her ass. But eh, anyway, I mean, I'm going to tell you something, too. Ikea, 
you supposed to be so real. I would have loved for you to have called Letitia yourself versus you sitting there going off over the phone. See, you supposed to be so rich and bouge to our bouge, bougetto and fabulous like that. And if you supposed to be that girl like that, then you should have had enough balls to call Letitia and tell Letitia exactly what you thought of her and that tight, dusty, late ass uh, brunch that she had. You'd have got more cool points from me had you did that versus you want to call everybody else and talk all this shit. See, that's what got Keisha ass whooped on basketball wise with Tan. Whatever. So then Letitia is saying that she's tired of playing in the middle. Good. You should be. You should have never had your ass there from the beginning. It killed me when you got big oversized hoes want to be in the middle all the time all the damn time. Girl, please get out of the child listen <laughs> look the, <laughs> the gag is you being <laughs> you being in the middle is right up the par quiet as it's kept both of y'all shape all three of y'all be shaped like the number one honey <laughs> we <laughs> we all know Latice, latrice is the one and we know who the double o's is anyway <laughs> Moving on from that, um, so Letitia got real, real petty, and she just decided to let the table know exactly what she felt about Ikea uh, and, and her foolishness. Ikea, y'all know I got to get her this, and her foolishness and her holier than thou, and she thinks she's better than type of attitude. See, that's what you do, Ikea. So you claim you so real and you so this and you so that. Well, you damn sure weren't real enough to say what you had to say to the bitch that you needed to say it to. Much like how Letitia sat down in front of the whole damn table and said that she just don't particularly care for you or your attitude or your holier than thou and you think you better than everybody else attitude. Girl, all y'all still living in damn Jackson. All right? All of y'all still living in damn Jackson. Ain't now none of y'all moved the hell up out of Jackson. None of y'all. The gag is that's when you really made it. When you left, when you <laughs> when you moved the hell out of damn Jackson and made it somewhere damn else. Quiet as it's kept. Anyway, so Latrice, so Gucci, JJ, and Cliff all hang out. They go uh mud ratting down to Cliff and uh pumpkins, ATVs, and all that stuff. Real beautiful house, real beautiful house. I was down for it and all that. So the topic of kids to come up. <laughs> and then the confessionals, Latrice starts talking about, you know, oh, I'm not ready for a kid. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And I feel like a child is slowing me down, et cetera, et cetera. And then her confessionals, you know what Cliff said? Girl, your ass going to end up like megaphone. I scream. I'm going to hold what I'm going to say about Latrice and Cliff when I get down to that part when she went to her mama house. So put a pin on that. So Tambra meets with Ikea down to the juice bar. So Ikea says that she's still willing to do business and to work with Letitia when it comes down to Fair Street, whatever the case may be. But they have to talk about the plate situation. And then Ikea talks about her children being medical babies, miracle babies. First and foremost, shout out to your churn, Ikea, and I'm glad that they're here. But I'm getting so sick and tired of the women. The first thing they want to do when they get on reality TV is want to talk about churn, talk about having churn, talk about why they can't have churn, talk about their uterus or lack thereof. Um, uh, you know, talk about their malfunctioning fallopian tubes and all the rest of that stuff that I get it. Because those are all the places that are plaguing women, especially black women. And I totally get it. But can we please get a reality show where these women have something to offer us other than their uterus or lack thereof? I can't even open up the thing right. Um, you know, uh, their, 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 their fallopian tubes and all the rest of that stuff. Can, can we can we just get one reality show where they're not talking about stuff like that? Because there seems to be every woman's go-to when they ain't got shit going on. That's why it annoys me. Because whenever a woman has on reality TV ain't got nothing going on, that's the first thing that they want to use as a storyline. They coochie. They uterus. Or lack thereof. 
Moving on, because I don't want to get pumpkin too much. But I'm just saying, I, I'm getting over every time it's a reality show of an ensemble cast full of women. We always got to get the same song and dance when it comes to that. And I, for one, am just tied in, because ain't nothing wrong with my coochie, none. That's number one. Number two, y'all do need to have a conversation and but apologies i can't go around i really i mean you did go expecting to get a damn apology but your ass ended up being the one to get one first but we'll get to that when we get there i, I look i don't like ikea i don't like ikea i know her name is is anika a anisha uh a mishibishi bitch i don't damn know and don't give a shit because i just don't like her enough to care so her name is at, will forever and always will be Ikea on this channel because that's the type of attitude that she got. And I, I, Ikea rooms to go. Sitting up here trying to act like you balling. Girl, please, in my opinion, and that fat ass husband of yours, you balling on a budget. But we're going to move on. Anyway, so Morocco talks about how her lupus flared up after um the... Uh, her grandson's mom's film and again how old was Jerez when he impregnated this girl because they keep saying that this girl is 18 years old and Jerez is 20 fucking three years old and this baby is a damn baby so how old was Jerez when he laid down with this po child now I know it shouldn't matter no more because now she's gone but, you know, this goes back to proving what I said about how folks do run dead to the country. But I'm just going to let that go. Because y'all know Scotty later. Yeah, Scotty from there. And I don't want to ruffle no feathers. But um, I, 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 y'all need to talk to me. Because it's, it's a whole bunch of questions about that child that I really want to know. Maybe it's distasteful. Maybe it's insensitive. Or whatever the case may be. But listen, I don't know them. So I'm not tied to it no way or another. I want to know. Anyway, Pastor Harris ain't come around there to come see her, but guess who did? <laughs> Child, her faithful lesbian lover, honey. Y'all already know. Essie is going to be in a scene where her queen Come hella high water, honey. She is going to make sure that her face is there. And she's going to make sure that everybody know. All right? She don't need Pastor Hez. She don't need Pastor Hez Kyle Walker. She don't need him. And she damn sure don't need to buy him no damn Rolex for him to be a damn... See? Morocco, you make it easy for people to just run down on you with your real life. Because your whole life sits under one big shade tree. Be clear. Your whole life sits under a shade tree. First, this, this this put together marriage that you have with, with 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 your gay ass husband, all right. This 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 situation ship, um, that you got going on with your lesbian lover, um, come com, coming up on the thing, giving us a uh, lumber dyke and jack tees because that's what she gave. Girl, girl, Essie looked like she just clocked out of her job at Home Depot. <laughs> Girl, Essie, girl, Essie look like she moved like driving cabs. Like that's how she showed up down to go and check on her boo thing, honey. I know that's right, Essie. You better go and check on her. Anyway, we're going to move on from that because that whole scene annoyed me, especially when she got to the part about she going to buy him a Rolex because she felt like that's what that woman deserved. Essie said, I know you lying. You ain't finna buy him nothing and you ain't bought me. I know that's right, Essie. Essie deserve a Rolex before um, Queen has do. Moving on. All right. All of the many years of faithful service and, 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 and rubbing coochies with you that she done gave. She deserved a Rolex way quicker <coughs> than that man do. He ain't even taking care of his responsibilities as a damn dad or granddad. Let me tell it. He left all the responsibility on you. But then again, you give me one of them type of women that thrives off of shit like that any damn way. So it is what it is. 
I guess Essie gonna be the stay at home husband. Moving on. Um, so I get so Latrice go and meet up with her mama. Let me tell y'all something. And I'm more than show a lot of the women gonna be mad at me. Bitch, who cares? My main question that I want to know, and it's funny because really B said the same thing when I hosted the panel. I think it was last week or the week before last, whenever it was. When she asked, was there a conversation that was had between Latrice and Cliff before they got married about children? And I'm going to answer your question, really, B. My personal opinion, I really felt like that there probably was a conversation about children. I'm more than sure children came up considering the fact that he riding so hard to want one now. And then now she's reneging. That's really what I think. I really feel like the conversation of kids came up. I felt like Latrice being younger and he being older, she just kind of went along with the flow and told him what it was that he wanted to hear. Now, because I'm a... I'm, we gonna, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let it be. I'm gonna go on with my hypotheses. I believe she said all of this, and before they got married, she didn't have all of this when they first got married. I don't believe. If I recall last season when they met, she was still selling shit out the trunk of her car. That's really what I if I could be wrong, but it seemed like I remember that. Or when she met him, that's probably around the time when her hair business blew up. I think it was something of the sort like that. Um, in my personal opinion, I do believe that the conversation of children came up, but I also believe that now that she's on the come up and she's on the rise, now she doesn't want to have the baby feeling like a baby will hold her down and blah, blah, blah. And then her mama didn't make it no better when she says, well, from what I know with him, he reminds me a lot of your daddy. And I just feel like him having a baby by you is solely out of control and such and such. The reason why I'm not finna give Cliff all of that is because I really don't know Cliff. Now, yeah, Cliff does give attributes of that, but Cliff is also an older damn man. So what do you expect from an older damn man? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's kind of bugging me a little bit because I feel like Latrice and her peoples and everybody else that watches this show kind of feel like Cliff just did this out of nowhere. And I honestly just don't think so. Cliff really give me, he's always been stuck in his ways. So I just feel like he's always wanted a baby and wanted this and wanted that. But he was just like, cool. You want to rise, I'll let you have it, such and such and such. A, but now all of a sudden, she doesn't want that no more. And yes, she's a woman. It's her uterus. We don't have the right to tell her what she can and can't do with it. But we also can't get mad if Cliff decides that he don't want to be with her ass no more. Because that's something that should be talked about amongst both parties. And if both parties are not on the same page, then what are we going to do? So before all y'all women get under the comments with all of the it's her body, she could do what she want. I totally agree. You are absolutely right. But now they're married. She's now in a partnership. I thought when you got married, you changed the, uh, the I to a we. And I thought that was a conversation y'all should have. Just like if he decided he ain't want no more churn and he want to get a vasectomy. I also feel like that's a conversation that should be had amongst both parties. Just like if the woman decides that she wants to be on birth control to tie her tubes, that should be something that should be talked about against both parties. And if both parties are not in agreement with that, then y'all need to figure something out. Because then if that other person decides, well, your decision is too much for me, and then they decide to leave, then they're the bad person. They're the bad guy. They fucked up. The and another thing, it's, 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 it's like, it's sad that all of y'all feel like him wanting a baby by her is him trapping her. It can't just be, I want a baby by my wife. Like, it's sad it can't be that. Like, it, like the way... I mean, I don't, like I say, I don't know much about Cliff, so I can't give Cliff a lot. Y'all don't know that much about Cliff, so y'all can't give Cliff a lot. We just talk about what we see. And there's just a whole lot of questions that need answers to me, especially because I can see the type of man Cliff is. I, I don't know. Some in the milk ain't clean when it comes to this baby thing. And I'm going to need for Latrice to come the hell up off of it. Well, all respect, because y'all know I like Latrice. But she get very sensitive, honey. And, and I like Latrice. So I don't want her to feel no types of ways. I'm just looking at things from both ends. Because, you know, I am a man when I want to be. 
And if people can't understand the difference of opinion, or if people can't see that there is another side to it, moving on. So Ikea and Letitia meet up to talk, and she's hoping for an apology. Bitch, please. Not only did you not get an apology, your ass apologized first. <laughs> but whatever. So Letitia tells her that when she first came there, her energy was completely off. And she got really taken aback by that because that was not the energy that Ikea gave her ass when they was on the phone. Well, Letitia, listen, that was on the phone. Now a person is face to face. They can't have behind the phone and words no more. Now they in your face and it's now time for them to live up to these expectations that you have. But look, look, look at what you got. So they basically agreed to disagree and Ikea as apologize. Um, but she says she stands by, you know, her dirty plate and, and all that. And uh, again, Let Letitia, again. As much as I don't like Ikea, Lord knows, I don't like it at all. But I still not going to sit up here and try to act as if how she feels and what she feels. And you can't get mad at that girl because her plate was dirty and she wanted a new plate. Not to mention your road dog, Latrice, already said that her plate was damn dirty too. And so Gucci, girl, fuck you. If I, I wish, bitch, I'm, look. I'm not finna wash no damn plate. Bitch, I want a new damn plate. I'm not finna uh, wipe out, take a napkin, or wipe nothing off. Uh uh, girl, it's COVID and monkeypox, Delta variant and Omicron, HIV and STDs and STIs and, and UTIs and every damn thing else up under the sun running around here. Now, nah, bitch, I want a new damn plate. So I'm not gonna act again. As much as I don't see it for IKEA. I can't sit up here and act like all of her feelings was just invalid and Letitia was all the way in the right. You're hosting a brunch. So if somebody at your brunch is dissatisfied and you can fix it, fix it without all of the damn attitude. But I was on your side when it came to um, Ikea because I'm sorry. Ikea wants so bad to just be this 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 it bitch and girl y'all in jackson <laughs> i keep telling y'all that sit down anyway that's all i got i ain't got no more to get y'all girl y'all jump down in the comments y'all let me know what y'all thought about tonight's episode as far as love at the lockup i am gonna get y'all that tomorrow because i had the time to do it so that's gonna come tomorrow also make sure to be on the lookout for the review for Roa on Sunday, as well as Love and Hip Hop on Monday. I will not be uh, reviewing Love and Hip Hop Miami. Don't ask me. I'm not reviewing Love and Hip Hop Miami. I only got space in my life for one Love and Hip Hop franchise. And if, if I'm going to pick, it's going to be Atlanta. So be on the lookout for Atlanta, um, Miami. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. I'm gone. Bad.